Forty years ago, retailers asked brand owners to put this symbol on their packages to eliminate the need to place price stickers on every item sold in their stores. This EAN-UPC barcode held a 13-digit number called a Global Trade Identification Number, or G10. Few envisioned what could be unleashed by this simple code. Embedding this number in a machine-readable symbol started an information revolution. While this tool was designed to support business-to-business -business transactions, in today's more connected world, it is now being used as a two-way communications channel with consumers and increasingly regulators, acting as a proxy for consumers. When it was first utilized, the G10 referenced information needed to support the supply chain, things like weights and dimensions, pack counts and pallet configurations. Over time, more information has been linked to this number. Information to support business-to-business -business transactions, more advanced supply chain needs and data synchronization. In today's interconnected world, our information needs have exploded, and we are using the G10 to reference all kinds of information that consumers and regulators want and need. So the barcode is reaching its limit. New regulations are moving through governments which require that product ingredient and nutritional information is accurately available digitally. If it's on a package and the consumer is accessing that information digitally, for example by scanning a barcode, the information must be available and it must match the package. Today, the only way to link information to a specific product is to change the GTIN every time the information changes. But when the GTIN needs to change, we incur additional cost across the value chain. And these costs are huge. G10 changes create excess and remnant inventory, double slotting in warehouses, out of stocks, and administrative fees. Current estimates suggest that a change in G10 results in lost sales of between two to four weeks and unintended distribution voids in the range of five to 10% of stores. Today, many value chain participants believe the costs of changing the G10 outweigh the benefits of providing accurate product information. Across the industry, these conflicting requirements are resulting in inaccurate product information permeating our value chain. This problem must be solved. Today's conflicting requirements are adding costs to our supply chain, eroding consumer trust, and ultimately undermining brand value. This challenge will simply get worse as the demand for information increases. Our industry has a dilemma that will best be addressed via the voluntary but authoritative leadership of the Consumer Goods Forum Board, its liaison group, and member companies. We have an unstoppable force, the need for more and for more accurate information, meeting an immovable object, the costs driven by changing the G10. The NGPI project is intended to build industry capabilities to address this dilemma by understanding, firstly, which information can add value and at what place in the value chain, and secondly, how we can leverage existing GS1 standard carriers to carry that information without adding costs to the supply chain. In the end, this project is about building industry capability, so companies and trading partners can choose to use those capabilities in situations where value can be unlocked. This additional capability has the potential to unleash the next information revolution. Retailers, manufacturers, consumers, and regulators will all see the benefits of richer data accrue over time, and the supply chain will not suffer. For individual companies, this is not about a hard switch, but providing choices for adoption. For example, the G10 data could be held constant, supporting not disrupting the supply chain, while a product variant number could be used to differentiate minor product changes. One retailer estimated that they could save 8 to 12 million euros in lost revenues and reduce significant amounts in food loss if they could track the expiry date through the supply chain. In addition to today's EAN UPC barcode, the group is exploring four other existing GS1 standard carriers. Each of these carriers embed the G10. They allow us to hold the G10 constant, enabling the supply chain to function without disruption while using the richer fields to provide the information consumers and regulators need. The NGPI project is completing a preliminary analysis to understand the implications of the various options. 
Work to date suggests that most retailer systems can read the G10 embedded in the more advanced EAN UPC Plus add on and data bar 1D barcodes, even though few have the ability to do anything with the richer information. We believe that innovators will find ways to leverage the added information that can be carried by these more advanced barcodes. The project team believes that the longer term solution resides in the 2D GS1 QR code or data matrix. The G10 can easily be embedded in these carriers. They can carry more data, like real-time product-specific attributes. For brand owners, they are actually smaller. They can be applied with more room for error than the 1D carriers. For retailers, they can be read even faster. The downside is that 2D carriers use a different imaging technology. Based on current equipment life cycles, scalable implementation is probably 10 plus years away but we need to look at this more carefully in the next phase. The project team's conclusions are that in the short term, there is minimal downside to shifting to advanced 1D carriers in the form of low software costs, and huge upside in having the richer information they can carry.